Okay, we're going to video on Sunday, the 2nd of April, 2023, just gone 2.27 p.m. Chicago time. Do hope you are doing well. So it's the weekend and it's time for the weekend futures market recap. I go through 15 of the largest futures markets and I show you what I am seeing on my charts. We've had a fantastic week this week, finally got the break to the upside. Uh, so we're going to roll through the e-mini and show you the charts daily all the way down to the tip bar charts. Then we're going to go through uh, the signals uh, for all of the futures markets and show you what kind of set up this week. But before doing that, we're going to talk about better volume and the red, white and blue pattern that I talked about three or four weeks ago because we've had a nice little signal on red, white and blue on the weekly chart of the E-mini. So here we go. This is uh, better volume below the price bars here on the weekly chart of the E-mini and it colors the block bars uh, with various kind of volume patterns. The red, white and blue pattern is where we have exhaustion buy and exhaustion sell sandwiched uh, with a high churn bar. Now, high churn is when we have relatively high volume but relatively low range, and those high churn bars are marked in blue. It's one of the reasons why, with the multiple time frame better indicators, I mark professional activity in blue. Different algorithm to calculate professional activity. The original better volume indicator was showing the low range and on a high volume is when we are likely to see professionals active. Um, better Pro-Am uses the average trade size to identify that, but essentially they're getting at the same thing. They're getting at where the professionals are active. So we've got a sell-off happening here, and the reason why the blue bars kind of come in is the amateurs are selling down uh, with relatively high volume, and the professionals kind of come in and buy this low, and it compresses the range, and that's why we get these blue bars here with high churn. So the red, white, and blue pattern is where we've had exhaustion sell, we churn and then we have exhaustion buy. So exhaustion sell is uh, white and exhaustion buy is red. And so this low was marked by this red, white and blue pattern where the professionals stepped in around or just under the 3,800 level, kind of held it there and the market kind of took off. Well, with this week's activity, you can see we've got a green bar, so nothing particularly special kind of going on. But two weeks ago, we had a blue bar here. So we had red, white, and blue pattern, exhaustion sell, high churn, exhaustion buy. So that was potentially a, a turning point. And now with this week's activity, it's been uh, confirmed because we broke above the high of last week and we closed above the high. So that's a nice kind of pattern. Again, just showing on this dip on the way down, you can see the professionals kind of stepped in. We held. We've had another one here on this dip down. The professionals have held over the last couple of weeks. Bang, we've kind of taken off to the upside. So that's an interesting pattern on better volume, and you can go to the mini watch website and get that. But let us go to uh, the more traditional view of the better indicators, where we have everything on two panels side by side. We've got everything to do with volume on the left-hand side, with better momentum below the price bars, and better pro-am on the price bars themselves. Professionals in blue, amateurs in yellow. And then the right-hand side, everything to do with price, with better sine wave, which is the plate of spaghetti beneath the price bars, calculating the cyclical activity in three different time frames, and that allows us to plot support and resistance lines on the price bars themselves. And when we get breaks of those support and resistance line, those break us into uh, trending moves, upside and downside. So positive and upside is uh, in red. Uh, kind of negative and downside breaks, uh, downtrends in white. So with this week's activity, uh, we've had a confirmed uptrend break uh, with the background printed in red, which means we're in an uptrend in terms of price and volume. So Better Pro-Am has signaled a few months ago now, uh, showing that we are in an uptrend and we've just gone through you know, a, a multi-week kind of uh, weakness here with the white bars kind of in a downtrend. And then with this week's activity, finally, we got kind of confirmation and we've broken into an uptrend there. So the background is in red. So it's all good. Uh, we're breaking to the upside. Let us see where this goes. A classic pattern that we've had confirmed now is what I call uh, caught in the dark. So this is, we've had a little break uh, below uh, support here and the bars have turned white. And so we're in a downtrend on the lowest time frame. And then on the uh, intermediate time frame, uh, at this point here, a support kind of comes in. So we're broken into a downtrend, but we're caught uh, by support. And the next highest time frame kind of comes in. And we start to rally from there. And it's caught in the dark because the background is black. And that means we're in this kind of no man's land where uh, volume wise, we've signaled an uptrend, but price wise, we're in a downtrend. So we don't know which way we don't have confirmation on two different uh, kind of ways of measuring trend. 
So uh, it's in the dark because the background is red and we're caught by the uh, intermediate time frame, the next highest time frame. So that's a caught in the dark pattern where we start to rally back above resistance here and we're now broken into a confirmed uptrend. So that's kind of nice. Um, so on the daily chart, we're kind of confirmed up. So that's kind of good. Now, uh, 135 uh, minute chart here, exactly three uh, 135 minute bars in a day session of the E-mini. You can see here we're also in an uptrend and we're above resistance on the low and the intermediate time frames. Yep, temporarily little end of trend signals kind of come in here, but we keep on busting up through those. So we're in an uptrend. We've got to see where this goes. We've got a bearish divergence pattern, but that's based on a uh, an exhaustion buy pattern here and that was getting the move going so this has not ended the move we need to see one of these blue professional bars at the highs at kind of new highs not kind of stuck in a channel there where we're trying to kind of bust out that's getting the move going uh, however on better pro am uh, we've come up with rambo patterns kind of up here um, so we're kind of running out of juice a little bit the moves being bred, led by the amateurs but i will say with rambo patterns what we're looking for, we can easily kind of bust through them to the upside. What we're looking for is the low of that amateur sequence to be broken. So, for example, here where we had a Rambo pattern, the low of that amateur sequence that led to that, that's the important point that needs to be uh, broken in order for that move to be kind of negated and shown that that was just amateur activity getting wrong foot and we come back down here. So you can see here with this amateur sequence kind of on the way up, it's like, you know, the low for that sequence is a long way away. So um, we could have a little bit of weakness from here. Um, I'm actually out of the mini at the moment to profits the end of Friday. You know, I do expect this move to continue higher, that we're in this kind of mood now uh, where we're in an uptrend. We're going to surprise to the uptrend. Yep, 4200 is going to have a little bit of trouble up here. We had blue professional bars taking profits up here previously. So that's going to be an important level there. But let's see. I think we're going to uh, continue higher. It's been difficult to uh, kind of tune out uh, the mass media kind of uh, gloom and doom uh, commentary that we've been having over the last uh, two, three weeks, ever since uh, Silicon Valley Bank, you know, people have kind of ratcheted up that kind of doom and gloom. And so uh, to kind of trade against that has been difficult to kind of block that out. But uh, hopefully, um, you know, take the signals, follow the uh, the actual charts rather than the uh, talking heads. 45 minute chart here. Um, so now nicely broken into an uptrend and you can see we're above um, resistances on the intermediate and the highest time frame here. Uh, this was the, the exhaustion pattern kind of getting the move going. All those blue professional bars kind of stepping in here after the Rambo pattern where the amateurs got wrong footed. Bang, we're kind of stepping up, uh, kind of going. So I expect to see an exhaustion pattern of a similar read to that on the 45 minute chart here. But temporarily, I think we could have a little bit of um, just profit taking on Monday. So that's why I'm kind of out at the moment. 15 minute chart here. This is the week's activity. So it's solid yellow lines show the beginning and the ends of the week. So uh, last week we kind of set up with blue professional bars here. We rallied hard and then uh, we had a little bit of weakness and then we uh, jumped overnight. We kind of had a gap open. I think it was on the Wednesday and we kept on going up. And you can see bang, 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 end of trends kind of over here. On this pattern here, again, it's a flush pattern, but that flush is based on that exhaustion buying, and that exhaustion buying was getting this move going. So we've not seen that exhaustion buying at the end of a move. So we've got to kind of uh, wait for that. And then going all the way down to the 13,500 tip bar chart here, which gives us day and night session here. And you can see here we've been in a nice uh, uptrend uh, all the latter part of the week with these red bars, kind of bang, bang, bang. Exhaustion buy, bearish divergence, end of trend on the intermediate time frame, some blue professional bars right up there at the highs. So that's why I'm saying that we could have uh, reached a temporary little kind of a blip uh, in terms of a profit taking move. And we'll have to wait and see uh, Monday's activity to see kind of what happens. Uh, whether we get a little bit of a sell-off and another opportunity to kind of step back in over the next couple of days. But there we go. That's uh, the E-mini. Finally got that kind of break, uh, the court in the dark uh, kind of pattern that I've been talking about over the last couple of weeks. We've got resolution uh, this week's activity. It was a nice kind of break to the upside. So let's look at the tip bar charts now where we've got the triple signals uh, on these individual charts. Slightly different look and feel to these charts because we've got the best of the better indicators all on one chart. And triple signals kind of come up where we have all three non-correlated indicators kind of come together. So uh, beginning of the week, I was short the euro. I was hoping for this uh, retrace to kind of work out. We had blue professional bars kind of come in here. No, I got taken out my stop up here. But uh, on Friday, I re-entered short because I still think the euro is kind of coming down and the uh, USD is going to strengthen. Um, so this week's activity um, with 
signaled the beginning of the week by the solid yellow line. We've come back up to test this uh, one nine and a half uh, level here and we sold off pretty hard on Friday, which was kind of nice. Uh, so we're overbought. We don't have um, an exhaustion buy pattern up here at the highs, but we have some profit taking, I think, here and here and here. So uh, and this move here on that little retrace that kind of uh, got sold off and kind of down here. So you can see all of the uh, Forex charts are a little bit weak at the moment, and that's why I'm kind of short Euro. British Pound up here at the highs, a whole bunch of blue professional bars kind of come in here. On the retrace here, under the lip, blue professional bars kind of come in here, and they sell it down here pretty hard at 124. So it's, uh, it's not signaled short uh, this week with the British Pound because we don't have exhaustion buy, but it's uh, looking pretty weak there. We had some nice signals, though, two weeks ago into that move with the British Pound. Aussie dollar looking uh, weak as well. So um, we had trouble at 67 and a bit up here with triple signals last week. Uh, this week we had a signal kind of early in the week, but it kind of ran out of steam. And here we've got exhaustion buy. Uh, we've got blue professional bars kind of taking profits here. We need to drop below this uh, kind of channel area um, in order to 66, uh, 8, in order to really give us kind of confirmation that we're headed on the way down on the Aussie dollar. So that's Aussie dollar. Japanese yen sometimes moves a little bit differently than the other majors. And here you can see beginning of the week we had this sell-off in Japanese yen. Nice kind of triple signal here. And uh, we're not going to signal um, long until we've got exhaustion sell down here. Some blue professional bars kind of come in, but not a lot. So we don't have Japanese yen uh, signaling for reversal at this point. We're still in the downtrend when it comes to Japanese yen. So um, I'm short euro, hoping that one's going to work out this week. Um, could surprise. And what's the rationale for that? Possibly, you know, the people are seeing the strength in the equities market in the US and we've got some strength in the bond market as well. So maybe the, uh, you know, the global flows are flowing into the US market to take advantage of uh, opportunities, market opportunities there. Let's wait and see uh, if that kind of uh, works out this week. E-mini on the 13,500 tip bar chart here, you can see the setup for this last week. On Friday of last week, we signaled long here. We had exhaustion sell, bullish divergence. Not a whole bunch of blue professional bars at the lows, but we bust out of that channel. And then with this week's activity, bang, this was the killer. Um, 4,000 mark, all these blue professional bars kind of came in here to buy that breakout. That's the exhaustion buy, getting the move going. Bang, we've headed off to the upside. So we've got some blue professional bars taking profits. Exhaustion by bearish divergence, we're overbought. So all three indicators potentially, if we drop below a better prime here, going off there with a uh, kind of a, a short signal, but it's uh, it'll be a profit taking type signal rather than a reversal and change of trend, I would have thought. And then 10 years uh, notes uh, here. We had um, a couple of signals last week. Let me just go back. So the previous week here, you can see here, that uh, we had some nice kind of triple signals go on. Blue professional bars coming at the lows, exhaustion, sell, bullish divergence, and a flush pattern. Then finally, we kind of rally there. But when it got into uh, 117 up here, we didn't have a whole bunch of blue professional bars at the highs, exhaustion, sell, and so on. Um, but they kind of forced it down at this point, and we've got more signals going on here. Exhaustion, sell, bullish divergence, flush, blue professional bars right in at the lows here. And then this pattern here, at the close on Friday, a whole bunch of blue professional bars coming in, buying that breakout. So that is not profit taking because it's not at a kind of new highs type move here on the chart. You can see we're busting out of this channel area from here to here, and those blue professional bars are getting the move going. So it's a very strong move in 10-year uh, notes, which means rates are coming down, bonds are going up, uh, and they're kind of a Across the board, uh, the bonds are looking strong. High, even junk bonds, high yield um, bonds are kind of looking strong at the moment. So there we go. Those are kind of the major financials. Let let us look at the precious metals with gold and silver and Bitcoin. So uh, gold kind of going nowhere. We got above uh, the 2000 level here and we've been fussing around. But the last time we see blue professional bars kind of come in was at the lows on this little dip here. We're kind of above there. It's not looking super strong for gold at the moment. So the uh, the big move in gold um, just might be resting for a while until we get kind of the next setup uh, for a move in gold. Um, silver this week, we kept on powering up to 24. Some blue professional bars taking profits up up here. Uh, we didn't have decent signals on the gold and silver markets for this rally and that's because we never got the exhaustion sell uh, patterns. I'm kind of bemoaning that over the last three or four weeks here, but uh, let's uh, see what happens with gold and silver this week. Bitcoin, 
Um, we're up at the 29,000 here, but look, all these blue crushed bars kind of came in here, kind of sold it down pretty hard. This is the weekend activity where we're starting to weaken here. We're down at 27s, but you know, it tends to be range bound uh, with uh, Bitcoin. We kind of come in at the lows. Uh, the last kind of range low is about 26.6 down here, exhaustion sell. Blue professional bars kind of come in here and we rally pretty hard. So uh, Bitcoin, as usual, uh, pretty volatile within these kind of wide windows of um, support and resistance. Crude. Now, crude took off nicely this week. Been talking about crude over the last couple of weeks, setting up down here at 65, 66. That was a super important level. And we had all of these triple signals go off kind of down there. And then this week, uh, last week, we had a nice rally, uh, kind of sold off towards the end of the week. We just kept on going, though, um, powering up. We're out. We've gone from 65 to 75. Uh, in crude at the moment and no uh, some blue professional bars up here but it's not, not exhaustion buy so uh, that's interesting on crude that it's becoming uh, super strong so we've got to look for opportunities to kind of get into that natural gas um, bullish on natural gas for a while but it keeps on playing down and down and down but this week we got down to 210 and uh, exhaustion sell comes in blue professional bars kind of steps in not a whole bunch of them there we kind of sold off, but uh, getting above 224 will be an important level. So let's see if we kind of uh, test uh, into this area and then kind of break back above 224 on natural gas this week. And copper, copper not looking good at the moment. So we've been uh, topping out at uh, 410, uh, kind of up here, and we've had triple signals going all week. Blue professional bars at those highs. Step in here on the retrace and sell it down on the retrace, sell it down. So uh, that's not looking strong for copper at the moment. So let's see if copper kind of sells off. And then the ags. Uh, corn, uh, nice signal two or three weeks ago here, which kept on powering up and up. whole bunch of blue professional bars, though, at the end of this week. So let's see if they take profits on corn. Soybeans, um, not a great signal here. We didn't get a good signal at the lows down here because we didn't have exhaustion sell. The last exhaustion sell pattern we had was a while ago. But blue professional bars, stair step trade comes in here, rallies. Now here, this looks, looks more like profit taking out the highs. Blue professional bars, exhaustion buy, bearish divergence. So let's see if uh, soybeans kind of goes the other way. And then wheat. Uh, last week, nice signal. All the blue professional bars come in. We test, bang, we rally. Nice little stair step trade there into these highs. And then here on wheat, we've got the same thing. Uh, exhaustion buy, blue professional bars kind of taking profits at 720. And we've uh, weakened from there. So it's going to be an interesting week. Uh, we've got uh, the e mini kind of strong, but maybe a little profit taking earlier in the week. We've got the bonds looking very strong uh, with 10 years, so those might really take off at the beginning of the week. And I'm hoping for weakness in the euro and all the other currencies against the USD. Um, so that might be a very interesting week. So I hope your training is going well and looking forward to Monday.